Okay guys, welcome to another video, and this video I'm going to be taking a look at your Sinclair magazine. Now if you've never watched any of these uh, magazine ones before, basically I just read through uh, the magazine and I just talk over it, and that is about it. There's nothing too exciting, but some people seem to enjoy it. So yeah, your Sinclair, it was launched in 1984 originally as your Spectrum. It was initially going to be published twice a month, then it changed to, or is it, no, bi-monthly, it's bi-monthly every two months, I think it might be actually, um, and then it changed to monthly in June 1984. Editor was Roger Munford, Kevin Cox, Teresa Mon, Matt Bealby, who I actually uh, have heard of. The first issue, like I said, was in January 1984, and the final issue it was in September 1993, so that was nine years. So that's actually not bad at all. So the the, the version, sorry, not the version. The one I'm going to be looking at uh, was it came out in March 1987. You can see there, and on the cover we have got, I assume, is that Monty Mole? I think it is. Um, what else have we got? No, hang on a wee second. I've just it's just it disappeared. Monty Mall and yeah, Elf Readers in Monty. They're also, you've got the chance to win an Arkanoid arcade machine, no less. There's a sports special and there's also reviews of 60 Spectrum games. Yeah, so anyway, let's dive in. Right, okay, kicking things off on page, it'll be two, I think, is it? I've got Crackout, which was a. Uh, it was basically it was an Arkanoid clone, though it kind of turned the screen uh, 90 degrees. I actually quite liked it. I liked it on the C64. Never actually played it on any other uh, other version. Then what have we got here? Star Games, Way of the Tiger. I was never a fan of that game at all. Um, I liked the premise of it, but I, just, I don't know. I just didn't really get on with it. Barry McGuigan's Boxing is... With, without a doubt, in my opinion, the best 8-bit uh, boxing game. Rescue and Fractalis is a cracking game, especially in Atari. And finally, Beachhead 3. What a strange combination of games, actually, but four, four good games. One, I'm not overly keen on. Then we've got Arkanoid. You can see there, Crackout came out exactly the same time as Arkanoid. I'm sure I got Crackout before. It must have annoyed companies when they buy the, uh, the the you know the license to print an official game, and somebody comes along and uh, copies the idea. I mean, the fact that they were they spun it ninety degrees. That was probably their way of uh, saying, "Oh, we haven't copied you," you know. But uh, yeah, Arkanoid, another good game. Uh, I loved it in Atari ST. Wasn't a big fan of the Commodore 64 one because it was just too difficult to play. Though I believe it might have been quite nice to play using the uh, the mouse. So what have we got content wise? Apologies for it kind of the way it updates. It's just the, the way the software works. Inside your Sinclair, Alvida in Monte, Sports Special. I'll be Ian Botham and John McEnroe, I think. Fist to the coin up sensation from Data East. I don't really remember it being touted as a coin-op sensation. Never actually played the, the arcade version, or have I? I might have played it, I might have played it in MAME, yeah. Could this be the programme? Is your programme good enough to fill this spot? I was just basically looking for uh, people to write games. So let's see the price of game, there you go, and the cassette. I mean, even the Spectrum, the Spectrum was £8.99. The Amstrad and Commodore were a pound more. That always annoyed me as a a kid. It always annoyed me as well as the C64 owner. The fact that I had to pay more money. Ah, there's Feud. Uh, I've actually just did a... I put out a, an 8-bit face-off kerfuffle the other day there for that very, very game. This month's front, sorry, this month's frontline award for the daftest looking joystick goes to Britannia Software for its Phaser 1. <laughs> ah, there we go. Flippin' it, Tucker. Hollow Gonch and Amelda. Do you me? remember him? He's two kids. I loved, eh? Absolutely loved, what do you call it? Grange Hill. 
Here's, <coughs> excuse me. Here's the beardy who walked off with a solid gold version of everybody's least favourite board game. At Domark's recent Travel Pursuit Golden Challenge. Johnny Ball. I absolutely loved him. What was the name of that programme? Think of a number. Zoe Ball's dad. It was brilliant. I actually saw a thing in the paper recently. He's actually doing a... He's doing a... I think he's doing a thing for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Bargain Software. 1 Esmond Road, London. If you wish to purchase any product from our list and find that you can buy the same product cheaper for another mail order company, simply enclose the lower amount stating the name of the other company and where you saw the advert. Yeah, good. Let's see the price. Super Soccer 7.95. Our price five pound ninety. That's not bad. Two quid off. That's not bad at all. Oh, so this preview, preview, preview. Future socks. So, so, future socks. Future shocks. Even. Don't remember that. Sigma Seven. Don't remember that game. Ah, there we go. Get your hands on your new Sinclair One Two Eight Plus Two before everybody else does. I remember that advert very well. The new Spectrum 128 is more than just a monster memory, it's an ultimate family computer with a built-in data recorder for easier loading, superb graphics capability, two joystick ports, a proper typewriter. Now wait a minute, your two joystick ports could only work with Sinclair joysticks, so that was a bit cheeky. Oh, so that was a wee bit cheeky. They're doing a, an Apple, in other words, you've got to use their, uh, their accessories. Future Shocks President, don't remember that one, Greyfell, ah, I remember that, yeah, another one of these pseudo 3Ds, Amarok, my mate used to play that all the time, I was never a really fan of it, Knuckle Busters is one of these games, it looks amazing and it is awful, at least it is in the Commodore 64, it's a terrible, terrible game, it is completely and utterly broken, what's that, Terror of the Deep? Inheritance. <clears throat> Inspector Gadget, Throne of Fire. <laughs> that was me in Friday night. Or, yeah, Bazooka Will. The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole. Uh, Adrian Mole, that was a... It was a, basically, it was a diary of a young, a young little boy. And it was immensely popular. It was written by, I can't remember what her name was actually. But, uh, it was hugely popular as a book. And then it was released as a TV programme and it was still amazingly popular. There you go, there's Loco. It was a wee bit small to actually read this. Drive yourself Loco, I mean, drive yourself Loco. What was that? Drive your own Loco. Da, 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 da. No idea, I didn't even know that was out in the spectrum. I actually need to do an 8 bit face off kerfuffle of that game. Letters right to the okay. Let's let's go for we'll go for the phantom sweater. In reference to Gwyn, Gwyn's relationship with that most, uh, with that most gorgeous, sexy, shapely, raunchy, and luscious of reviewers, namely Rachel Smith. I only have two things to say: Gwyn, you lucky bar steward, and Gwyn, you lucky bar steward. Yeah, very good. I think uh, it's safe to say that the. It was, yeah, it was fairly childish, a lot of the letters. I know that Crash was very much so. I think, to be honest, I think uh, Zap Magazine was probably just as bad. But before I make a sweeping statement, let's let's read uh, P.W. Pearl of Rooslip, Middlesex. I would just like to point out that I do not possess an anorak, neither do I use Ian McCaskill's specs. I'm sure you're not too inter interested in Cromptons, Egg Timers, Rats, Whistlers, blah blah blah. I think you're confusing the basic differences between Greiser, but I've got no idea what he's talking about. Uh, I've been reading your Sinclair for ages now, but there's one thing that bothers me, and that is a train spotter. It bothers me as a as well. Uh, what is a train spotter for goodness sake? Can't find it in the dictionary my teacher doesn't know what it is either. Yeah, okay. Hit list, let's have a look at the top 20 games for the spectrum. So, um, Infiltrator, Konami Golf, Head Coach, Hit Pack Elite, 180, Ninja Master, Kai Temple, don't remember that one, Scooby-Doo, 
Scooby-Doo was one of these games, it was meant to be the most amazing game ever. It was like taking part in a, a cartoon and the actual thing that came out. Th though it wasn't a bad game, it was nowhere near what they were touting it to be. Konami's coin-up hits, cracking pack that. Space Harrier, Speed King 2, Paperboy, Footballer of the Year, Computer Hits Volume 3, Great Escape, Cobra, Travel Pursuit, so Super Soccer, Ollie and Lisa and Gauntlet. Twelve months ago, the top game was Winter Games. Rambo Commando Year Kung Fu. Shadow Skimmer. Remember the name, don't remember much about the game at all. Oh, that is... Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> that just makes me feel quite... Oh, no, nah, I don't like that at all. Hive, never even heard of it. That's horrible looking insects and what have you. Yeah, let's move swiftly on. Terra Crystal, one of my favourite games. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think this might have been written by Joffa Smith. Does it mention? Does it mention him at all? Jonathan Smith was he was it was up there as one of the best programmers on the spectrum. He really was amazing programmer. No, I don't. I don't. I'm sure. I am 99% sure Joffa Smith wrote Terra Cresta, but it doesn't actually. Probably back then, people didn't really give much thought as to who actually wrote games. It's only now that, with the power of the internet. Your key to communications! Want to join Micronet? Need a modem? Look no further. Free modem with your first year subscription. Well, stocks last, so in other words you could subscribe and they say, Sorry mate, we don't have any left. Harvey Headbanger. Hmm, remember the game, but don't actually remember. Playing it. Tazword. Ah, uh, that was a... Yeah, it's a word processing package. Tasman Printer. Tasman Software. Empire Software. Spectrum tie boxing. £7.95. Our price, £5.70. Ah, Tempest. There we go. By Electric Dreams. Yeah, I forgot that they actually got a release. Thing is, back then, I don't think anybody really wanted to play five-year-old arcade games. Certainly not stuff like Tempest. I was never a fan of Tempest up until uh, up until I actually got to play the arcade version, and I realised just what an amazing game it actually is. There we go. Joint number one soccer simulation for all home computers. These were such a big, big thing back in the day. Agent Orange, yeah, that was a budget game, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, what's this? Handball Maradona, dearie me. Super Soccer, so this is the game that was number two in the charts, I think it was. Silent Service, lovely game that. I could never play it, I always wanted to be able to play it, but I could never really quite uh, master it because I'm a bit thick. Space Harrier, what's it getting? 9 out of 10. Yeah, it's, I must admit, I didn't like Space Harrier on the Spectrum until uh, fairly recently, and I think it's a cracking. I think it's a cracking port, I really do. All thing considered, you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. Elevator action. That's a game I've never really, uh, never really quite got, never really got on with. Always found it quite limiting. Hyperball. Futuristic sports are all the rage and have you ever known Massertronic let an opportunity slip? Of course not. So here's Hyperball, not to be confused with Firebird, similarly named Hyperball. No less. Let's see. Peripheral power. What have we got here? Spectrum 2995 Sweet Talker. Mega Sound Sound Sampler. Your Sinclair Sports Special. Let's see if we can spot them. Is that Tessa Sanderson, Steve Davis, Barry McGuigan, Brian Clough, John McEnroe, and Big Beefy himself, Ian Botha. 
I couldn't stand John McEnroe back in the day. My sister loved him, but I actually think I like him now. He's in the uh, obviously he's a uh, comment here. So is this trying to review various sports games? Ten frame. I was playing that in a live stream recently. Not a big fan of it. I must admit. Uh, I think personally, I find ten pin bowling extremely uh, very very limiting. This is indoor sports. Best uh, darts game I ever played would have to be 180. My Master Tronic, I think it was. See, the text is very, very, very small. So, what do you rank to Specky Sports Sims down at Microfair? This is what some people had to say. Christian Kerry, 14, lives in Bramshot. Can't remember his name, but he keeps saying it's a monster. Yeah, anyway, let's move on from that. Ah, Brian Jacks. <laughs> Not the best picture in the world. Brian Jacks, he was a superstar's extraordinaire. Barry Paul, 67, Leather Lane, London. Now, is that supposed to be R2? Not R2, D2, C3PO, possibly. Now available the official Spectrum upgrade. Turn your Spectrum into a Spectrum Plus for just £24.95. Ah, right, okay, yeah, so you virtually just swap the keyboard about. Ah, right, this is playing tips. Sheolins Road, apparently that was kind of the unofficial game to, uh, the unofficial game to Year Kung Fu, but I just found I didn't enjoy it at all. Glider Rider. <laughs> He's all ears, our Adam Dixon. <laughs> Apologies if you're watching this, uh, Adam, I'm sure your ears don't look that big now, mate. Print me quick, what's this? Trap, the thinking man, shoot him up. I did play that fairly recently when I was doing a... They did what if I get a software and I, I wasn't impressed with it one little bit. Oh, Vida's in Monte. Never really got into that one either. I did like, I loved uh, Monte on the Run, but never really played the sequel though. I've got to say the, the soundtrack is rather, rather nice. There's all maps and that kind of stuff. Pull out checkmate. Oh, dearie me. Also, they actually had type ins in this. There we go. George in the Deadly Meteor. As many of you have already discovered, George's flight through the meteor was no picnic. Here's MJ Boyle's cartoon graphic. Ah, right, it's not. I thought it was a type in. Oh, yeah, it is. That is a type in thing, but yeah, I thought this was an actual game. But I'm assuming this is some sort of map that they've made. Bubble Trouble. Don't remember that one. Yeah, I mean, maps were all the power back then. Arkanoid! There we go, there's the arcade version Arkanoid. I love Arkanoid. I was actually playing that at... Uh, where was I playing that? I was playing that at uh, Nerg. And I got to level 5, which I was... Uh, I was very, very, uh, very impressed. Who nerfs that? Is that a... TV? What on earth is it? Wait a minute. Here's your opportunity to win the rumpiest, pumpiest new arcade game in a unique portable forum. Oh wow, because this is Arkanoid's Tato Terminally the Addictive Updating of Breakout. You're not going to be able to carry an enormous arcade machine through the streets and your bedroom would have to be huge to fit anything else in. So thanks to the boundless generosity of those terrific chaps at Ocean, your Arkanoid arcade game will come in a suitcase. How cool is that? Wow! That's awesome! So that is basically a portable arcade machine. I wonder who won that? Oh wow, I bet you that goes for an absolute fortune. Even got the spinner as well, fantastic, I love that. Right, we're going to gloss over this part, adventures. I really, really, really don't do adventures. Never have, never will. Oh, there's Noel Edmonds. I know it's not really him, but anyway. Romantic Robot, yeah, they did various interfaces for the Spectrum. And 
unfortunately the writing's slightly too small to read. More Adventures, The Ozone, The Legend of Apache Gold, Silicon Dreams. Again, one thing I always mention about these magazines, which you tend to forget about, is just how much black and white there was. But the only things that were colour, generally, were uh, adverts. What is this? The Hive? I don't know what this is. Is that a game? I think it might be. Trojan Cam Masters Light Pens for the new Spectrum Plus 2 and others. Football Management. All games available for any 48k Spectrum. Micro Drive and Interface offers. Noble's Computer appears. Where were they based about? Eastern Esplanade, South End and Sea. <laughs> For free, no obligation estimates, phone or send your computer to Nobles for the latest, cheapest repairs in Essex and nationwide. Access. Is access still a, is that still a type of credit card? I'm really not too sure. The Battle of Britain. Uh, another one of these war games, I think. Agent X. Don't remember much about it. Hacker 2. Could never really get to grips with that. Even Hacker 1. It just, it was kind of lost on me. Double Take, I'm sure Double Take was some sort of uh, pseudo 3D game, I think. Yeah, by Ocean. Oh, is that it there? It's hard to actually tell. Gunstar, was that not a... Uh... Gunstar, no, I'm thinking, that's, I'm thinking Gun Fright by uh, Ultimate. I'm just trying to see who actually wrote Firebird. Ah, so it's a completely different game. Mega Mega Bucks. Don't remember that one. Dural Big Four. Combat Links. Critical Mass. Turbo Spree. Saboteur. Don't remember ever playing Turbo Spree in the Commodore 64. I think it might have been released uh, after the Spectrum one, but the Spectrum is always the it's always the system you you always think about. Thidalon. Never actually knew that it was out in the spectrum. But interesting. I'll actually need to I'll need to actually take a few uh, start writing down some of these games and doing some eight bit face off kerfuffles, so yeah. Cat trap. Uh, who was that by? Was that Alligator Software again? Can't remember. Video face digitizer. With the video face you can transfer television pictures into spectrum screens. With this screens you can do whatever you like, you can load them into a drawing program or make hard copies in a printer. <laughs> and back in back then that was the future. You know, nowadays we've got phones, we don't even give it any we don't give it a second thought at all. Hire Spectrum Software, over five hundred different titles available for hire, including arcade adventure, business and educational. Yeah, I bet that wasn't used for copying. Nuclear countdown. Yes, ah, uh, Top, was that Top Gun I think it was? Yeah, that was Top Gun. I don't think that ever came out in the spe uh, on the C64. Computer repairs, there's loads and loads and loads of companies all wanting to repair your computer. And there was always these stupid cartoons which I never really got myself. Pools Predictor, Free Racing Analyzer. Yeah. And if it actually worked, then why would these guys be trying to peddle software on a magazine when they could just win the pools? Right, is that their idea of uh, being funny whichever way you look? The thing is, they've, they've flipped this advert upside down, and you'll probably find it, like me, you're going to go, well, I'm not going to turn it upside down to read it, so that's a bit daft. Skeletrix, yeah, that was a rather luck lackluster sort of racing game, I think, if I remember really. Ninja, did like that on the on the Amiga, I think it was. Yeah, Konami Golf, don't think that ever came out on anything other than the Spectrum. Possibly in Amstrad. There was always games that they released on one computer and not the rest of them. Super Cycle, I did do an 8-bit face-off kerfuffle fairly recently. BMX Simulator, another really, really good game. There we go, Ocean Opportunity Knox, expansion in an exciting industry. How rich do you want to be? You've probably heard a lot of claims and promises from software companies concerning payment for program code. If you have talent and dedication, then Ocean with resources and international connections will bring the fame and fortune. 
the fame and fortune you deserve. So that 30 years on you could go along to these play events and do talks. Your Sinclair and Konami combo doing time when three fancy Philip electronic clock radios and 30 copies of Konami's Jailbreak. Really? Have you played Jailbreak? <laughs> it's bloody awful. Yeah, more computer repair things. Hacking away fancy a poke in the hacks. Yeah, that was how you kind of got cheat modes back in the day. There's another pulls program. So, yeah, we're kind of gradually coming to the end of uh, this magazine. Again, all the colours seem to just really be... It tended to be uh, adverts, which was slightly unfortunate. What on earth is this? The Volex TTX 2000S. It also sounded extremely high. It's a future. The future 2000! Now we're in 2019, we still don't have any flying cars. Or even more importantly, we don't have any uh, hoverboards. There you go, if you subscribe to your Sinclair, you can pick a game, any game worth up to 9 95. Arkanoid short circuit double take, and uh, yeah, that was a. Well, there's your Kung Fu, I'd probably go for that one, I think. Stop playing games, use your computer to make money, turn your hobby into home based income. Full in part time opportunities to cash in in this tremendous market. High openings, earnings easily possible. Open, sorry, open to any amateur micro user and gamer. Write for free details. Ha! <laughs> George Street in Edinburgh. <laughs> now, George Street is actually a really expensive place to have a shop, so he must have been doing something right. I, I'm assuming you'll get a piece of paper saying, Put an advert in a computer magazine and say, do you want to become a millionaire? Apparently doing that is not actually illegal. So yeah, we're kind of getting into the boring stuff now. Lots of classified football directors, transfer tapes to disk drives. and The Love Oracle, this program is a key to the future. That to What's it? It, you can understand how this program works. You will probably know how the universe works. Here you will find the ultimate answers to the ultimate questions. This amazing program comes with a 300 page book and a super package for the unbeatable price of £9.95 by Solar Publishing. Yeah, I wonder what these are actually like. Right, I'm not even going to try and read these. Well, there you go, hardware for sale. Spectrum 48K cassette player, joystick, switchable joystick interface, Timex printer with paper, light pen, about £150 worth of games, all boxed and in good condition, £100. That's probably what you'd pay for it nowadays, so... You know, if you think £100 is a lot of money now, you know, when you think about it, it's, it's not bad. Another uh, colour advert, obviously, for Short Circuit. Great film. Um, not overly keen in the game. Certainly the game in the Commodore 64 was pretty bad. 10th frame, yeah, it looks all funky, the guy with his big floppy hair, but ultimately it's actually quite a boring game. Yeah, and I think that's we're on the very, very back page. Jack's back, Bomb Jack 2. Don't think I've ever actually played Bomb Jack 2. Wasn't a fan of Bomb Jack 1. But uh, anyway, listen, that is it, guys. That is your Sinclair. If there's a magazine you want to see featured in this feature, please put your comments below and I'll see what I can do. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.